golf fanatics it's another week for the preview show welcome to billy ho sports this week we're going to be breaking down the american express we are heading out to the west coast for the west coast swing so this is your opening strategy session basically for your weekly dfs and one and done i am all about the one and done this year me and my partner dark hero hopefully bringing home some good money this week so primary objective of this video is to prepare you for the upcoming week in addition to hitting the ground running with your research, we want to help you find the proper golfers that will help you score those streaks and bonuses. For DraftKings, Amex is a high-scoring affair, so definitely all those uh, eagles and birdies. So what we're looking for, uh, before we get started anyway, um, horse racing fans, I've got a ton of content out there for the upcoming D Kentucky Derby Trail playlist all that kind of good stuff. So catch all that action here. A uh, couple other housekeeping items before we get going. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, smash that like button while you're at it. And uh, set your notification bell so you don't miss anything coming down the road. Very important. Finally, in the comment section, uh, tell me uh, your most popular one and done pick for this event. And uh, let's get going. As I said previously, this marks the beginning of the West Coast Swing, the American Express. It is a pro-am, and one of the important things you're going to need to know uh, are threefold, really, I guess. Uh, this is uh, basically best of the rest event is what I think they're calling these things. Uh, just an 8.4, it's similar to Sony, just an 8.4 million dollar purse, 1.5 mil to the winner. So it's not one of the higher level events. We'll get to those in a few weeks, the cut is going to be 54 holes. So the six of six and worrying about getting six of six through way down on the to-do list for this week, low priority. Players will experience one of three courses Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll get into each one of those. And uh, Sunday we'll play the Pete Dye Stadium course for those who qualify. So, as we bid farewell to Hawaii and welcome to the three three course rotation, La Quinta, California. Uh, so we're gonna guide you through La Quinta first. And I've stayed in a few La Quinta inns, and they're not all that nice, but this golf course looks pretty good to me. So La Quinta, what you probably need to know most of all about this golf course it, is that it's kind of an insult to the PGA professional. It is way too easy. Uh, they're just, it's just, I guess the only course I'd rather them play one of the other courses twice or find something else. But anyway, many of the par fours are less than 400 yards on this, on this particular course, or just barely over that mark, which is just too easy. Uh, the four par fives are noticeably a lot shorter. You're not seeing any six. These are like 540 yard par fives that they're going to hit 300. You know, they're going to have seven irons into the green on uh so basically in a nutshell it's baby town frolics uh so and a nicholas tournament course honestly is not that much better but it is a hair bit more challenging you can't just go out there and dick around and shoot 68 you have to be at least on your game to score so basically like i said it's also easy you need you need to be accurate with the driver uh and not wayward too bad and you need to have your irons dialed in and you can light this course up somewhat similar to uh, LQ is what we'll call La Quinta. I uh, forgot to mention that earlier. We're going to call LQ, La Quinta, and NT, Nicholas Tournament, and SC Stadium Course. If you've, look, if you've seen any American Express leaderboards over the last five years, that's what you'll see in parentheses. And that's the course that they're either played or are playing. So that's important for showdown, obviously. This is going to be one of your... Uh, common knowledge type of uh, showdown things. So anyway, the Nicholas Tournament course, NT, 
also easy ball striking if you drive it and hit your irons you're going to be sitting pretty the par fours are a bit longer and more tuned into typical pga standards the par five say the par five 15th hole is not one you want to get cute with water lines the entire left side of the fairway into an island kidney shaped green for your second shot so a lot of times players just uh lay up and then hit wedges into the uh for an easy birdie because it is smaller greens and these greens are very easy to put on. So that's, you got to keep that uh, in mind. Uh, those that Allen green I mentioned is guarded on both sides by bunkers. So you have to uh, be on your game there. So you won't hear a lot about those first two courses. They only play them once. They're super easy. You need to score, score, score on those, but the stadium course is the one we need to get down with. It's by my favorite guy, uh, golf course designer, Pete Dye. I just love the way he lays his golf courses out, uh, especially to how to analyze them. So this is going to be the stadium course. It's like Stadium West is what it is. It's basically like a cousin course to TPC Sawgrass in Florida. Uh, very, very similar. Uh, I don't think it's as, I think it's easier. Uh, obviously, but uh, if you're unfamiliar with his work, Pete Dye likes his courses to be strategical. Uh, the stadium course features small, well-contoured greens, uh, deceptively short par fours, but position golf is important. Bunkers and green complexes are reinforced by those railroad ties you'll see around the greens. Really neat, uh, clever design trick, and plus it, it helps with erosion and whatnot. Uh, Dye's earliest courses in the 60s, like Harbortown, which we still play at the RBC, place a premium on the precision, a.k.a. target golf philosophy. Uh, the par fives at the stadium course, West, play relatively easy. And you can see when you're going over the flyover, it basically is paints a picture with that Bermuda rough because this time of year it's still brown. So you've got the green, squiggly, uh, dog-leggy looking. You can tell how contoured the golf course is fairway-wise. Not super wide fairways, but you don't have to be super long off the tee. You just need to put the ball in the right positions. That's Pete Dye in a nutshell. So the par fives are good. Overseeded Tiff Dwarf Bermuda Greens. These are amongst the lowest in greens and regulation putts. Putts per gur is what they call it. So they're really easy to put on. They're really, really pure greens. Uh, the signature 17th hole is obviously the mirror image of the 17th island green. It's diabolical, uh, similar to the Sawgrass Players Championship. So in a nutshell, this course, like I said, precision off the tee, positioning, so positioning will offer significant advantage uh, into the small greens, wedges, and, and I know you're going to hear, like, we're going to go over it. I'll show you the approach shots. There is a ton from 150 to 175 on the approaches. So if you want to focus on those distances, that's fine. But they are borderline wedges. Uh, just to, for an example, I was going through looking up an article. Justin Thomas hits his pitching wedge about 145 yards. So we're talking eights and nine irons. And Van Dam of the LPGA. Uh, she hits her pitching wedge about 135. So these players are long. And you also have to keep in mind, we're talking eight eight irons, nine irons, and mostly wedges. Uh, and the par threes uh, mostly fall into that range as well. They're all sitting around the, the 150 to 185 range. There is a couple over 200 as well. But uh, that's that's where you, you see a lot more because you're playing, say, three par threes that are – that that land in the 150 to 175 range. So now you times that by four, you know, then you're going to get that many more approach shots in that range. So anyway, and obviously they hit on par threes, they're going to hit these irons longer because they're teeing that puppy up a little bit, by the way. So most pros, you can mix, mix in opportunities gained. Uh, tee to green, putting I like from 10 to 20 feet. Uh, the rest of it on a course history gift certificate. So uh, I think it's about that time, y'all. Let's take a look at the field. Okay, before we get going, don't forget my weekly contest 
It's going to be uh, on DraftKings by Free Drop Billy is my DraftKings username. So you'll see Billy Ho's Amex or something like that by Free Drop Billy. That's my contest. If you're already in my YouTube league uh, on DraftKings, then you're auto- going to get an automatic invite. If you're in, if you're in that league, then all the contests you'll be eligible to get into. I'll post the link whenever we get pricing out uh, tomorrow sometime. So let's get into that. We're going to start filling this thing up. We got a little bit closer each week. So I think uh, if I get it out early enough again and maybe pump it up a little bit more during the week, we'll fill it no problem. So it's just $2 single entry contest, top two paid. Uh, So that's a, I I feel like that's a nice round number. Maybe one day I'll up it to three or, or something like that down the road. Oh, by the way, the majors are always up to three dollars. I always bump it a dollar on the majors. Might even do it for the players, but keep that in mind. So we're going to get into the golfer profiles now. And what we're looking at is Rick Gaiman's uh, Rick Run Good. My dude has made some changes, and I've got some things to say about that. But I'm going to do that in a separate video, and it's just going to be some basic thoughts of mine on this new golfer profile, the dark mode, and how. Uh, guys of my ilk have trouble seeing it, and I'm sure he's probably going to be hearing about that uh, pretty soon anyway, but I'm going to make a separate five, 10 minute video and we're going to go through it and I'm going to show you some ins and outs of it, what I miss about the old format and what uh, maybe I'll find uh, helpful with the new one. So this is the current field you can load for American Express, and if we are listing them by official world golf rankings, I suppose. Uh but anyway, the Amex field this week is solid. We've got 22 out of the top 50 in the uh, uh, rankings playing. Obviously, your top dogs are going to be Scotty, Patrick Cantlay, and Xander Schaffle. So those three uh, seem to be the best and probably your, your highest win equity, guys. We'll get into one and done toward the end of the segment, so stick around for that. Um, so Scotty can't lay, and I think I, I would probably rank can't lay, even though he uh, obviously he is one spot higher, but I think as far as his course history goes, uh, and the fact that nobody loves ripping easy courses like old happy feet, I'll rank Patrick Catley above Xander Xander playing quite well. He's good on this course as well. So I, I don't have any problems with him either. Uh, Wyndham Clark is a guy, and I'll just kind of go down and briefly mention a few of these guys because I got a lot more to say. Uh, so we get down a little further, and my man Sung J M coming in hot fire, but you have to beware of that one shitty round he always seems to toss out there. The man set the record at the century for the most birdies made in a single golf tournament. I think it was 30, I forget 30 what. But uh, he finishes four shots behind Kirk because he shot an even par 73 on Saturday. So uh, he has, if you look at some of his missed cuts, he drops that shitty round in on Thursday or Friday, and that's how the guy misses cuts. So just keep that in mind. I think he's getting less and less. He used to almost nearly do it every event, but now it's like he just he does it ever so often. So he's getting a little bit more consistent in that way. Uh, but recent form and solid course history guys that I think will be priced in like the 8,500 to 10K range. Uh, and I'm looking over here at this stat model coming up. And this is just a, a American Express. One of these is a Pete Dye model that I put together. And this other one was Amex from last year. So uh, coming up with, you know, guys like Scotty and uh, obviously can't lay M all up top. You can see Tony Finau's up there as well, Xander. Kucher, who disappointed a lot of people this week uh, by missing the cut horribly bad on Friday. I don't know what happened to his game, but he was he just got on the bogey train and could not get off for some reason. But guys like them, Chris Kirk, Brian Harmon, Coley Cole, uh, luck boxed in at the last minute. Chris Kirk having a nice uh, tournament following the win at Century. Uh, can't beat that guy. Uh, this guy, I'm not. He he played really good in uh, Ryan Moore in the fall. I, I'm not so much digging him uh, this week. I don't think he's the type of guy. I mean, he's obviously a short course player. He's uh, he's a real short knocker. Pretty good with the wedges, but uh, and he might have some good history here. I'll have to go back and check that. So anyway, 
there are other guys, obviously Tom Kim, Si Woo Kim, and the Jason Days of the world who have who have all been pretty decent. Uh, this was a uh, Sung Jay's. This is what the golfer profile tab looks like now for Rick Run Good. You go on there and it gives you this little thing on the, on the side and you can star it. He's got it connected to the model now, which is good. And it's also kind of its own URL. So you can actually like save this in your own bookmarks. If you're law and, and if you are logged into the Rick, Rick Run, Run Good site, you can obviously just go hit your bookmarks and then pop one of these guys right up instead of going in, uh, into the digging for them. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But like I said, Sun JM. Here's his four rounds last week at Century. God awful third round. He really blew apart. Uh, it was putting, I think, for the most part. And uh, around the green was really shitty, which he's a good around the green player. Uh, and uh, you could go down through here. This is his stats at the bottom. And uh, he's one of the best Bermuda putters on uh, on the tour. So he's a guy that I think coming in hot, he'll get a lot of play. He's a possible one and done candidate. Uh, Jason Day, I mentioned, uh, had a resurgence last season, including a win at TPC Craig Ranch. Uh, another guy, like uh, I believe, let's see, this might be on Pete Dye model. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, Adam Hadwin. He might not show up on the Pete Dye model, but Adam Hadwin has been making a bit of a res resurgence as well. Uh, he, he's it down here in the top 50. Hadwin is a, uh, is a guy that, uh, actually this is a uh, documented I've noticed. He's a guy that typically comes in and Amex and West coast swing is the first, uh, his first events of the season, right? Well, he's actually played the century and he's played Sony, which he only got two rounds at Sony because he missed the cut on the number. So I'm really hoping that, does curtail the ownership somewhat because the guy has got a really good record at uh the uh amex and in this uh first he's got six rounds under his belt right so that may jump start a finish like he had back in the say 2016 through 19 he ran off four straight top fives back then so uh i'm kind of interested in hadwin next week uh another guy that's that uh, should be over here, shane lowry He's a guy that uh, I, I'm not going to be real big on, but he does have some success on Pete Dye courses, like AKA Sawgrass and Harbortown. So he may play pretty good here, but his putting keeps it uh, keeps him down. And and you know, as John Rom said, we are looking at a fucking putting contest. So uh, I don't want to bring a guy into a putting contest with like Shane Lowry, who does tend to struggle with the flat stick. He's a little better. Uh, on like Bermuda surfaces. And uh, so he might be all right on the West coast. He's a guy that lives in Florida, so he doesn't play a lot out here either. Uh, but him and Justin Thomas, obviously is another one that I wouldn't touch uh, as far as the flat stick goes. That dude has been well documented, uh, but he has actually, he has been uh, coming around a lot. And for a guy who I thought had no history here, if you go all the way back to 2015, he finished T7. <laughs> FYI, he was probably barely out of high school, honestly. But anyway, uh, JT has been rounding back into form with the approach game. His obvious weaknesses are the driving the ball, driving and putting. Uh, now, I think he'll be able to dial it back on these shorter courses, and uh, and he should be able to score just fine. But depending on where he's priced and what kind of ownership he gets, it's going to be uh, skeptical on playing him in DFS. And I really don't think I want to risk it for the biscuit in a uh, one and done. Might want to be saving him for a certain golf course in his hometown, Valhalla, a.k.a. PGA Championship coming up. So uh, that's Billy Ho's hometown too, by the way. So anyway, another guy that's going to be low owned probably is Wyndham Clark. Wyndham Clark has been uh, not good. He moved way up to the top 10 in the in the rankings here, but uh, the man has really, really struggled this offseason for some reason. Um, with the putter, not only the putter, this is another thing I don't like, the stupid thing on the left that you can't collapse. 
So you got to go all the way down here and then move this over to see what you need to see instead of collapsing this thing out of your way because all it really shows you is a little scoring breakdown and and, and some maybe some rankings that you can compare. But then it's basically a news feed for Rick's uh, YouTube channel. So if we could collapse this, that's going to be one thing I'll discuss. Then that way you don't have to uh, shift back and forth over here with the strokes gain category. Uh, I suppose if you miniaturize the screen down to like 70, you could probably fit it all in there. But I don't, can't do that because I don't see as well. So you can see how bad he was. 10 strokes lost at uh, Hero. He did manage to get things back together a little bit, gaining off the tee again at Century, which is a good sign uh, because he is basically driving and putting. Now you can see how bad that putter will flip. So actually, I'm I'm uh, considering uh, firing up Wyndham Clark. I think he had a T13 here last year, so I think he'll be really low owned. That putter will flip, and he uh, nobody's better on Poa, which is uh, some of the surfaces. Some of them are Bermuda, some of them are Poa, uh, but they're all overseeded. So they're basically a lot of overseed with Poa, and nobody's better on Poa than Win DC. Risky play, but that's okay. Tons more guys to discuss going down through here. Um, guys like Cam Davis, who bounced back, obviously, uh, after being a disaster at Century. Tony Finau, who's rounding into form pretty good. Ricky Fowler, Sam Burns. But I tell you, there are a couple of guys that I will be firing up, uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to show you much on them here, if I can find them. One of which is Denny McCarthy, and the other one is Taylor Montgomery. So looking at Denny McCarthy, uh, he's actually having a pretty good week this week. He wasn't all that at Century, which I completely understand because he got destroyed off the tee in, in, that, in those wide open fairways. But like RSM Classic and, and this tournament, uh, I think he can flex his putting skills. He's obviously one of the best in that category. Uh, overall, and along with uh, Taylor Montgomery, who's getting his form back, who's who's playing quite well this week at Sony. So Monty is another dude that, that can roll the rock, and he struggled there for a while. He kind of lost it as far as the putter was concerned, uh, but he's, uh, he's kind of rounded back into form somewhat. And uh, so this is his first tournament of the week. He was touted by my man, Big R Colts fan, Ryan, off the Discord, and uh, I didn't listen. And he was, I think, like tied for the first round lead or whatever. But, you know, he he had a pretty good fall. You could see the putters rounding back into form because that dude drops bees on him with the putter. So uh, there's a back-to-back seven-plus strokes gained back in the fall. And I, and I would venture to guess he's having a pretty decent uh, tournament we can go look at the live leaderboard and see who's winning in the strokes gained putting category if it comes up fast enough. Keegan Bradley, I can't believe he's winning this golf tournament. Keegan Bradley is funny to me because I had no idea that every golf tournament Keegan, Keegan Bradley ever won has been on a par 70 golf course. And what are we playing this week? Par 70 golf course. Really weird. So. Let's go to putting. And full rankings. That's amazing that Joseph Bramlett is leading in total feet of putts made. That's insane because he's not a very good putter. Uh, Dylan Wu, not the greatest putter either, but he's making a shit ton of putts. So you can see there's Denny, and I wanted to see where uh monty was but he looks like he might be struggling this week a little bit but i'm not going to keep you that uh you just trust in the process basically so we're going to finish up with one and done i'm going to stop sharing because i don't have enough information to provide you due to uh the field not being completely loaded in the site that i pay for so anyway one and done for amex in my opinion not worth burning a Scotty or a uh, Xander type 
I'm considering Cantley because I think Cantley might be due to win this. But Cantley is another guy that you really have to wonder: Do I want to save this guy or not? Because he's been really good in the uh, playoffs down the road as well. So uh, that's one thing. But I'm fine with Patrick Cantley, Sung J M, Brian Harmon looks good. Siwoo Kim has won here in 2021, uh, and he's uh, been a known Pete Dye specialist. Adam Hadwin will make my top 10. I think that he's going to be low-key. He could be a guy that really goes under the radar and a guy that has uh, shot a 59 on one of these golf courses before. So look out for Adam Hadwin. Uh, But that's going to do it for the preview. I hope you enjoyed it. Best of luck this week, and until next time, see you soon.